rare situation is allowing you to buy some ETF stocks for 50% off. Learn more at crushthestreet.com slash profit 2017. Hello, everyone, and welcome in to CrushTheStreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri, and we're going to be talking today about ways to be successful and the adaption, uh, the changing world of the Internet and where, uh, where you need to be in terms of the trend to be successful in your entrepreneurial endeavors. And I have on the line today Frank Cottle. He's the CEO of Alliance Virtual Offices and chairman of the Alliance Business Centers Network. And he spent his career delivering business solutions. And we have a lot to learn from this man, uh, a man of this caliber, who has agreed to join me today. Frank, thanks for coming on the line with me today. Jenna, it's my pleasure. Well, if you wouldn't mind, uh, let's start with uh, your story, how you caught the entrepreneurial bug and uh, how you got to where you are today. Oh, gosh. Well, you know, the entrepreneurial bug, so to speak, I think was a family issue. My father was a serial entrepreneur, uh, built quite a number of very successful companies through his career. And so I kind of grew up with it around the kitchen table. Um, I never, it never dawned on me, honestly, to go to work for somebody else. It just wasn't something that I ever thought about. I always planned to to work independently. Um, so and I started young. Uh, uh, I didn't have a good college career. I was asked to leave the first college I was in and <laughs> started near kicked out of the second one. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I was not a conformist, I guess you could say. <laughs> uh, but I started a, a small commercial diving company uh, in the late 60s, early 70s and, and worked that company for a couple of years. Uh, Got rid of that and went into the yachting industry for another ten years. Did nothing really but race big sailboats and and uh, enjoyed the the life of uh, yachting and sailing all over the world uh, for about a decade or so. And from there, I I, I made a decision. I think uh, that uh, you know I'd never be an owner as long as I was a broker. As long as I was working on other people's vessels, I would never have my own. So I started. Uh, the predecessor company to what we have today, the Alliance Business Centers Group, and uh, just launched from there. It was just a very simple story, really. That's really awesome. And uh, it sounds like you just had it in your blood from a very young age. So let's talk about virtual offices. What is a virtual office and uh, what, you know, what does that mean in today's world? Well, you know, in business today, if you think about it, um, and take your own company as an example, uh, or any any small company. Um, almost every company today has uh, is is international. Um, it has uh, an offshore supplier of something and an offshore client of something for something. Uh, oftentimes, it have offshore employees. So our entire workforce, our entire globalized economy, is really what drives all the big trends in in the workplace today. And it's not just a virtual office uh, necessarily, but the fact that people can now work anywhere on just about any project. Um, we have offices in 52 countries around the world today uh, and about 700 locations. And, and we find that uh, an awful lot of our customer base um, falls into this category. And a virtual office or uh, a serviced office, our industry in general, we combine people place and technology into a single bundled product a workspace that is delivered with a highly flexible service agreement rather than employment agreements and leases um, and flexibility I think you talk about the internet you talk about trends uh, lack of flexibility is probably what's killed more entrepreneurs than anything else um, so we strive to create a highly flexible workplace environment that helps companies grow. And uh, we service everything from the global Fortune 1000 right down to the smallest entrepreneurial startup. Wow. Uh, gover government agencies, uh, and just, just about every imaginable customer type falls into this category today. 
You know, uh, we employ people, um, and not through direct W-2s, uh, because we, everyone's just private contractors that, that really work with us here through our network, but we have people that work for us in Argentina, Great Britain, we have partners in Israel and Asia, and, and it's unbelievable what the internet has given us in the 21st century here. And I guess, uh, in your opinion or, or what you've seen, what, what a game changer this has been in terms of being able to attract the best talent worldwide, as opposed to your local small town in the middle of Texas, which traditionally was very limited to the, the local talent. But now, with what you're offering, you're talking about basically being able to work in the most remote places in the world, but still have the most uh, highly qualified people at your company. So if oh, you would, uh, go ahead and elaborate on that. Oh, no, that's absolutely right. Um, we actually have, have always believed, we kind of went paperless in the early 90s, so we, we've been a great believer in technology and, and have built a, a variety of different technology solutions for our own company, and, and now they're used by quite a few others. Um, but um, we've always believed that business shouldn't be disruptive, uh, and that's a little contrarian because people always want to think of doing something disruptive, but, but we think it shouldn't be disruptive to culture, to families, to lifestyles, that if you uh, love living in a small town in the Midwest, but you're the most brilliant marketing person in the world, well, you should still be able to live in that small town uh, and, and still get a great job with a great company. Uh, and the technologies that we have today al allows all of that. So that's one of our foundations, sort of a family first uh, approach to, to business and, and the way we, we build things up. I think the trends though, uh, the mega trends are are very simple. Um, it's called contracting. Uh, you just mentioned that you have a lot of independent contractors that you work with. And a, a good example, if you were to look at, uh, take a, a Fortune 1000 company, take Cisco as an example. Um, five, six years ago, if you'd looked at their annual report, you would have seen that they made had a certain amount of revenue and a certain amount of profit, and that they had 325,000 employees. Hmm. Today, if you were to read that same annual report, it would say we have a workforce of 325,000. Wow. Okay. So what the difference is, is that probably 20 to 30, maybe 40% of what were employees previously are now contractors. Hmm. Now, they still have a great economic opportunity and, and that sort of thing. But um, uh, the, all of the major companies in the world have gone to a contracting model uh, that matches really what the entrepreneurial companies have been doing for decades. Uh, now that's the that's big business is doing it, government is doing it. And what that allows is it allows people to live where they want. You know, immigration is a huge topic these days, uh, all over Europe, all over the United States. Um, you don't have to immigrate to come work for us. <laughs> you can stay right where you are and work for us. Uh, and that's become true of every major company in the world. Um, so I think what we're gonna do is see a lot more, uh, a lot more change along this line. Uh, and just like, I don't even honestly know where you are today, uh, what city you're in, <laughs> but, but we're conducting our business uh, very comfortably using a, a, a very commonly used technology. Well, first of all, I am in Austin, Texas now. Um, keep Austin, keep Austin weird, baby. <laughs> keep Austin weird. That is the, that is the, the slogan here. <laughs> um, Frank, so what is then, What are you uh, employing people all around the world at this very moment with your uh, virtual offices? Is that is that what you're saying? <clears throat> no, well, we do as a company, yes. We do employ people all globally uh, as a company, but all of our customers that utilize our facilities and our virtual officing solutions, uh, they also are, are a much larger uh, part of that than we are. And quite simply, a, a virtual office uh, gives you a base, okay? Uh, let's say you're in Austin 
uh, and you have a small company, uh, a large company, you're a sales rep for a company, uh, you have a choice of where you can work. You can work from your home, you can work mobile from your vehicle, uh, you can work in a fixed office, a permanent office place, but your work might require that you have access to two or three locations, maybe clients in different locations uh, nearby, uh, uh, it might be uh, any number of things. So what people to do today is they take a, they create a network of small offices, um, and those offices give them the ability to have the business address, which is necessary. You have to have a place to receive your mail and receive your customers. Um, <clears throat> but they aren't necessarily there all the time. Uh, and what we've tried to do, and, and what virtual officing and our serviced office industry uh, is, has accomplished, co-working is a big part of that as well, has, has really accomplished is to utilize space uh, and staff more efficiently and technology more efficiently. Um, uh, an example of that is if uh, you and I started the company 10 years ago, we would have taken a five or 10 year lease on an office space. Who knows if we needed all that space when we did, we would have had to plan ahead and say, well, we're gonna grow so we get better, better get a little more. Well, that's something we had to pay for. Then we had to capitalize the equipment uh, the furnishings that we put into it. We had to see we'd have to hire a staff or a receptionist at least. Um, we'd have a conference room sitting there, even though we probably used it once or twice a week. So we'd have a 24 seven fixed commitment to a permanent cost and expense, which today going into a business center facility, uh, a co-working facility or utilizing one of our virtual offices, um, all those costs become variable based on use. Um, you have a shared in common staff, a people, part of the people, place, and technology. You have the place, it's gonna have offices, conference rooms, uh, lounges, uh, kitchens, reception areas, uh, meeting, meeting and training rooms oftentimes. Everything you can imagine in your own full floor office, yet you only pay for it as you use it. Mm. Um, the technology today has actually gotten simpler. It's just massive amounts of bandwidth and connectivity. Um, so where uh, you might have a small office and, 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 and have a, a, a small Wi-Fi set up in your office, maybe 50 gigabytes of, of, of transmission, you're gonna have, or 50 megabytes, excuse me, of transmission, Wi-Fi transmission, you know, a center such as ours, you'll have two or three or four or five gigabytes. Mm. So just massive amounts of bandwidth to power business today. Um, you can have, just do anything you need. Uh, so it's really a matter of taking things that were being wasted or not youth, not fully used and coming up with a better business model. Uh, it's really a very green way of doing business if you think about it. Frank, so it, it, it sounds real interesting. Uh, and I guess I want to ask you about the trend in general. What you, so many people are worried that technology are just going to remove and, and uh, get rid, eliminate so many jobs. And that's true to a large extent. Uh, but I'm just wondering what is the optimism in terms of all of this technology? that is entering the the 21st century and I'll, I'll preface it with this you know back in the 1800s 80 percent of the american workforce used to work in agriculture and now it's only two percent and if you would have told someone back then those statistics it, it would probably be very scary but things have evolved and people have entered into new jobs and and, and new areas of employment so uh any insight from your experience as to where things are headed and maybe the the jobs of the future if you will i think flexibility again is the key um you, you only asked about five questions there you know i know um, i'm sorry <laughs> i do that sometimes uh but you know going with the the, the first um do i think that uh, technology is going to overwhelm us to the degree where we'll lose jobs rather than create jobs. And I would say no. Uh, if you think about it, 90% of the technology we use today and we rave about and, and, and we're addicted to is really just about communications. We have better data, 
that we can access and share. We have videos such as you and I are on right now that we can share. We have direct conversations with a thousand people all at once. Uh, we have ways to, to reach big audiences. Well, that can't possibly restrict business and restrict jobs. That can only build jobs. Um, we have operations uh, throughout the world and, and uh, in some of the secondary markets uh, that you might think of. Um, uh, and uh, these are some of the most entrepreneurial, most uh, fastest growing uh, economies and job creation environments you can imagine in places like Africa and South, South America and Asia. Um, so technology, is, I, I think, is a, is a boon for everybody. Mm. Um, and using your example of uh, agricultural, uh, you know, 80% to 2%, that just means we got that much more efficient. There's no, there's probably five times as much food grown today in the U.S. by comparison to when that 80% of the people were involved in that. So we've just gotten more efficient at it. Right. Um, uh, so as long as we're, as a society, continuing to grow population-wise, which I think is inevitable, uh, um, there's going to be a need to service ourselves to, 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 to create uh, everything that we need for a, a, a good, successful life. Um, and that, again, that's only only going to create more opportunity. Well, good deal. I, I, I like that. And uh, when it's all said and done on a personal level, we have no choice but to, to move forward and be optimistic and, and make sure we are preparing uh, for the best possible future for ourselves and our business and adapting to these changes. And it's true. Things are going to get more efficient, but you just want to make sure you're in that uh, – in that segment of the economy that's going to benefit and not be washed away uh, and obsolete. And I guess that's where I was um, semi yeah, going in well, my head. Well, well I, I, I think that's it. People will have to keep up. Um, now there, I mean, during the industrial revolution, there was a, a, a group of people that uh, refused to adopt and they re were referred to as Luddites. Um, and there's always going to be, Luddites uh, 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 that are uh, not uh, going to adopt and going to seek to return to the past as a path rather than the future. Um, but you won't read about too many of them in books. Uh, there aren't many famous ones. There aren't many ones that really contribute much to our human growth and species. Uh, so, you know, adaptation and leadership in adaptation is what we all need and just embracing it and embracing it globally. I'm, I'm very much a, a globalist. Uh, I'm, feel, I'm very patriotic as an American, uh, but I also feel that uh, we have to recognize that we're, we're part of a global economy and a global environment and, and we have to reach out and, and embrace that. Good deal. All right, Frank. Well, if people want to learn more about what you're doing, and obviously you're a trailblazer, you're someone who's on the forefront of these trends, providing solutions, uh, where would they go and what can they expect to find? Two places I'll, I'll send you. Um, the first would be AllianceVirtualOffices.com. Uh, this is a large retail site. Really, it's a, uh, a very much like Expedia, except for office space and, and workplaces. Uh, and you can open 10 offices in 10 countries in 10 minutes. Uh, so th that's what you can expect to do there, all, all variety of services. Um, and if you really want to learn more about our in industry in general, um, go to a website called allwork.space. Hmm. Um, allwork.space is the our industry's largest news and information resource. Uh, it's a publication that we we put out uh, for the industry uh, and you'll you'll find everything that's happening around the industry and all the all the trends that you're talking about Frank Cottle everyone Frank thanks for coming on the line with me today it's very much appreciated my pleasure Kent.